All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, the 16th of November, and um, welcome back to class. We are on session IC11 today, and your I can statement for your notebook is I can use specific, precise language to describe how my author develops a story. So that means that we're going to be focusing on our specific words this week. Um, You'll see what I mean in a little bit. We have on our list of things to do on the bookshelf, uh, you have a notebook assignment this week. You have a Flipgrid assignment this week. Um, we will have a link set up to Canvas so that you can see those assignments. And um, of course, Loop is still there because most of you have still not bothered to do that. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is, for everyone who is signed up and active in Loop, you're going to get bonus points. I don't usually give those, but I'm sick and tired of people not doing what I ask. So for those of you who are doing what I ask, I think you should be rewarded. So for anyone who is not signed up in Loop, you might want to do that because you probably need the points. Because if you didn't sign up for Loop, there's probably a lot of things you haven't done yet. Um, your book club assignments are still on the shelf. Uh, they will remain there for most of the time that we're doing this. Um, even though you should have all those things in your arsenal already. And of course, I have left the basketball story down here for those of you who have failed to complete that story. Um, notice there's a theme going on here of failure to complete. We need to fix that. So today we're going to start out with, um, rather than a reading, our text is going to be a visual image. It's going to be a painting. If you have explored my welcome page, you recognize this painting. And what I want you to do in your notebook, in your, your IC notebook, not your book club notebook. I know this gets confusing, so I'm gonna say it again. In your investigating characterization notebook under session 11, I want you to take a moment to describe what you see in this painting. So I want you to pause this video, write down several things, and then start the video again. Make sure you pause the video to do this. Okay, welcome back. So this is Vincent van Gogh's famous painting called Starry Night. Um, it's actually one of my favorite paintings of all time. And um, for a lot of reasons that I'm not going to share with you because I want you to come up with your own ideas. But I'm going to make a prediction about what some of you have written down. And I'm going to say that you probably wrote, it's a nice painting. And some of you may have written, it's weird. And some of you may have said it's colorful. Some of you might have said, oh, there's swirls. And all of those things are true, but they're not very interesting. So now I want you to go back to your notebook. You're going to pause this video one more time, and you are going to expand on nice or weird or colorful or whatever it is that you wrote down. What do you really see? What really is going on? What are the details that come out at you? And why do you think that they're there? So I expect to see a good paragraph about this in your notebook for session IC11. Um, and that will be taken as a grade at some point. So look at the painting closely. Um, I'd rather you didn't Google it and write somebody else's words. Several of you have found that that doesn't serve you very well. Um, I've caught several of you plagiarizing things and you got zeros for your assignments because of it. So I don't recommend that you plagiarize. Use your own mind, use your own imagination, use your own thoughts and ideas because you have them. And the only reason that you wouldn't is because you're refusing to let them out. When you say I can't or I don't, you are correct. You can't and you won't. So open it up. Let yourself think about it. Stare at the picture for a while. It is a nice picture. Enjoy it. And write down how it makes you feel. 
What ideas does it put in your head? There's a message in this painting. What do you see? All right. So the next thing I want to talk to you about today is um, last week I had you do a notebook slide. I'm going to have you do another one this week. This one's going to look a little bit different. Last week's was um, two pages in a book. This week, your slide is going to be a blank canvas, a blank slate, nothing on it. And you are going to create the slide for me. And what you're going to do is create a scene on the slide. And that scene is going to explain something important that's going on in the book, why it's important, what's going on. So let me give you an example because I've feel like I have to give you guys examples of this and I hate to put ideas into your head and that's why I use a book that's not one of your book club books. So this is your book club book, which yours should look better than this already. Um, your web designer should be working on that already. That should be taken care of. And what you're going to see from me on this one is a minimalist scene because um, the book that I'm talking about is The Loop. And it is sort of a minimalistic book. It takes place in a prison and basically um, a destroyed and abandoned city. So there's not really a lot of stuff going on. Um, and yet there is. So my scene, as you look at it, is um, sort of an abandoned room in a, a big apartment um, in a big city and it's sort of dilapidated it's run down and then you see one person standing in the doorway there that's Luca Luca has escaped from the loop because um, there's been a war there's been a, a an an overtaking and things have gotten chaotic. There's a lot of chaos in the prison and he manages to get out. And the first thing he wants to do is go home. This is Luca's home. This is what he finds. So I wrote when Luca escaped, he went home to find everything destroyed and his family as he knew it no longer existed. He was determined to bring his remaining family home, and I put that in quotes for a reason, and save them from, and I left it, I left it right there, save them from, because he didn't want to say exactly what he's going to save them from. I don't want to give the book away. So I probably should have put a little dot, dot, dot there. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, and then down on the bottom, I'm kind of explaining what's going on, why it's important. He demonstrates strong will when he finds that his sister has been taken over by the drugs. Um, one of the things that happens in this book is that whoever the, the powers that be are, um, they get these people hooked on these horrible, vicious, powerful drugs that make them almost like zombies, and they control them. And his sister has been taken over. And he quickly realizes that. And in fact, his father's been taken over too. Um, but he quickly realizes that. And so he wants to help her, but it means that he has to go back into the loop, back to the prison where he was held all that time, and free the others so they can come out and help him because they have families out here as well. So his life becomes less of a priority as he risks it for the others. And this is a turning point in the book to me. This is where um, his survival becomes less important than everyone else's survival. Uh, let's see. Did you want to see that big? I didn't actually make it present mode. You can see what's going on here, but... That's good that I didn't have it that way because I had to edit it. You always have to go back and check things and edit and decide, well, maybe I want to change that a little bit. So here's the, the big picture, as they say. Um, and, and all I did was find a background on the internet to use 
this background was on the internet. Um, you can add other images to it. You can add other people to it. I added him to it. He wasn't on the background. Um, you can add as much as you want. You can do um, giffies. You can make things move around. Be as creative as you want. Remember, I like creativity. Makes me happy. You want me to be happy if I'm grading your work, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go back here. Um, I also, if you have not met with your group, I want you to. And if you have, I want you to anyway. You need to read. And, of course, the lesson is there. But if you look over here, you also have on this shelf, um, this is your notebook assignment for this slide. So I'll link that to you for you in just a moment. Um, the Flipgrid assignment for this week. These are the things that you need to discuss. Some of you did a wonderful job on your Flipgrids. I really looked, enjoyed looking at them this weekend. Um, of course, your name and the title and author of your book. Every time you do a Flipgrid, my name is, and this is the title of my book, this is the author. What chapter are you on now? Um, I want to kind of get a feel for how far along you are in the book. If you're on chapter one, if you're on chapter three, um, you better start reading. You should be nearly halfway through your books by now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, number four says, describe in precise language how your author is developing the story. If you attended class or watched the lesson, you know how to do this, just like we talked about the picture. So you're not just going to say, well, they changed the scene and now they're in this new place. How did they do that? How did the character get from one scene to the other? How did the character get from one person to another? How did the person come to decide, I'm going to do A and not B? How do you feel about their decision? Details with specific information from the book. Give me at least one example of how one of the characters in your book is growing or changing since the beginning of the book. Doesn't have to be your main character. It can be any character. Details about how they're growing or changing as you progress in your book. And as always, I want images, memes, graphics, GIFs, you know, all that kind of stuff that makes it interesting. And then I want you to ask a question. So you need to come up with a really good question about that part of the book that you are reading right now. Because whoever looks at your comments they're going to respond they're going to reply and they're going to have to answer your question so make it a good one and make it clear and then of course um the link that i told you i'm going to put on the other page is here also and here are your questions again you can copy and paste from here or you can open a cloud copy if you want to. You do not have to. You can do one or the other. Again, I would say paste this into your notebook so everyone can see it. Um, this is... I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to confuse you. This is your Flipgrid assignment, but I want you to put this into your notebook so that people in your group remember to do it. And I think it's a good idea when your groups meet to discuss what you're going to put in your Flipgrid and then actually record it when your group is meeting, you know, just go off and record your separate ones and make sure that they're all done. Um, I had a group last week that was going to do that. And then it turns out only one people, one person actually did it. So you need to make sure these things are getting done. So you can put this into your notebook so that everyone knows you are going to turn in the URL for this. When you submit this, you're going to submit the URL. That's this thing up here at the top. That's your submission in Canvas. Now, one thing I do need to tell you, listen to this carefully. I've had several people say flip, flip grid is not working, but it is. I have put the link to your club's flip grid in the spreadsheet with the book clubs. What you need to do 
is do not click on it. Copy it and paste it into a new tab. Copy it and paste it into a new tab. When you do that, it will open for you. All right, and again, it says record your responses in Flipgrid by Friday 1120. Um, I can't tell you how important that is. So let's, um, let's go back, see if I've forgotten anything. Oh, I can click in to go home. Okay, so you have your notebook slide and you have your Flipgrid assignment. Those are the two things that are due by Friday for, the, for today. Meet with your groups if you can. If not, meet with them on Wednesday. Wednesday's really the best time to do it. Um, but if you want to meet more, that's fine. Um, I'm going to give you time in class again to read. If you're not in class right now, well, you know, what can I say? You should come to class. Um, and if you have not done the basketball story activity yet, he's still here. He's still here. Always here. And that is all I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope you get everything accomplished. I hope you're reading your books. I hope you're working with your groups. Several people have been frustrated because they've tried to get a hold of you and you're not responding. So I've told them to move on as if you don't exist. Because they're going to get a grade and so are you, but theirs isn't going to be a zero. So if you are not doing anything, if you are not participating, you will be getting a zero. And I have no sympathy for that because we have tried to contact you. You don't come to class or you do come to class, but you don't respond to your group mates. This is a group activity, but there will be individual grades assigned. So even though you're assigned to a group, if that group does great, but you didn't do anything, you didn't do great. So step up, people. This could be a fun activity if you let it. And other than that, I have nothing more to say today. I hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you tomorrow. T2 out.